by George C. Poundstone, who was, um, he was um, the head of the, I think he ran or he started a camera club in, in St. Paul or in, Milwaukee, in um, Minneapolis and then donated all of his photographs to, Saint, um, to Bethel University. So I actually used these and re-photographed them on my, with my iPhone on my computer. So um, I got like all these moray patterns happening. And so the moray became a part of the, part of the, um, of the project. And I liked that, you know, that if I didn't have access to the actual print object, if I photographed mm -hmm. it on line on the screen, then the the artifacts of the screen would show up. And so it points to the screen as being a kind of medium as opposed to paper. Does right. That, so the yeah. paper has become a screen right. medium. But you often, I mean, you don't you don't typically photograph the screen, right? You more you more typically do screen. You do. Um, you download images directly from online. Um, yeah. Yeah, actually, I mean, this project it was the only one that I've... Right. Yeah, but all the rest of them um, are all images that I've taken from online that I've downloaded, yeah. Okay, so and so one of the things that has happened, re well, I don't know if it's that recent, but that, that there seems to be a lot of conversation about um, is uh, the, the degree to which images can kind of get away from you and the, the, the original author you know, I think there's quite a lot of anxiety about this, really, um, in, in certain circles, that the original authorship, the original author can, uh, can completely lose track of their photograph as it, as it sort mm -hmm. of travels, circulates, tra yeah. cir cir circulates and travels through online space. And I think that, the, I think that maybe we should look at the um, Grand Central Station mm. project as a, as as a very um, clear example of the sort of confusion of attribution of some of these mm -hmm. images as they as they circulate online and how that you know I mean it's it's a practical problem but it's also sort of an interesting right. conceptual problem right so this is um, uh, um, this was also a kind of assignment driven piece because I was asked by the Grand Central Terminal or the MTA to do a piece if I could do a piece for their hundredth anniversary celebration. It was for a, not a public installation. It was a public exhibition, but not a permanent installation. But I didn't want to just like, you know, do something just for the sake of doing it. And it actually took a while to come up with this. And now I'm really, I'm really happy with this piece because what it is, is um, I, you know, I realized something about train time and the sun, and I was working with the sun as a kind of subject in a way. Um, before, so this was this iconic image of the rays coming into the station, and I wanted to do something with it. So I tried to find, you know, who was the photographer, when was it taken, and so I did a lot of image research online and found that there were only four actual, like there were five or six different images, two of them by well-known photographers, and you could point to who the photographer was. But the most iconic ones, the ones that all the posters are made of, um, and I have five photographs here, it should be four, because I actually realized that I thought it was five, and then I realized one of them was just highly cropped and it was the same as. But this is what I called this piece, five photographs, four photographs of rays of sunlight in Grand Central Station, Grand Central Terminal, because these are all the different titles and attributions and dates. Grand Central Station, Grand Central Terminal, two, 19, 03 to 1913, 1920, 1926, 1928, 1929, blah, 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 blah. And then all these dates to all the different ones, like not, and then um, by all of these different people um, and organizations, some say unknown and anonymous, and then courtesy of, and then all of these different um, um, archives and trusts and all of which had at some point staked some sort of claim right, on right. So this what image, I, these what, images. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so these images basically, um, well, this is an, that's an installation shot. Um, it's just not very well lit. All of them have things like Picasso.com on them. They're like poster companies that are selling them. These are, this is a Google image search that I'm doing, and I'm just getting the, every time this image shows up in a Google image, in, image search, I'm taking that file and putting it into this array. So um, this one I loved. I loved that it said Picasso.com right over it. And so I actually made a poster of it, I, um, a painting, a canvas. I got a canvas made. But um, 
for the sake of illustration, I've actually put together. So this is one of the images. Transfer it's not? Oh, no, that's okay. That's okay. Right. So this is one of the images. So this is the same image cropped in different ways and also color treated in different ways. And then these are the different attribution, attributions I was able to find for this image. Here's another one. Um, one image cropped, like they sell posters this way, the this half way. Half the image. Yeah, half the image. Yeah. They color it like this. And then these are all the different attributions for this one image. And I, I mean, I'm assuming you're not interested in finding out sort of the, the truth, or, I did, or are I, you? I did try to find out, okay. actually, because this is also the image that the MTA has. Mo I bought a mouse pad at the MTA. <laughs> uh, the MTA, the, the, the arts, what is it, the MTA transit store. Okay. They have, like, all these um, souvenirs, and they have this on a mouse pad. I actually talked to the archivist at the, at the MTA, and they don't, they don't, they know. don't know. Yeah. But that's for, not for this one, that's for, I think it's for this one. I can't remember. Um, and then here's another one. But I love that they get flipped too, like, the, you know, people flip them. Um, right. And this one has, um, well, this, okay, this is the one that the transit, the, um, the New York City Transit Museum has. Yeah. The, but they didn't know who actually took it. Well, why don't we um, open it up to some questions, if um, anyone would like to ask some questions to Penelope or um, look at some, some of the works a little bit more. Actually, why don't, as we're sort of transitioning into that, can you talk a little bit about the, the design that you came up with in the, you know, so zoom back and, and talk about how this, oh. the process of creating this. The process of, yeah. I'm going to turn the lights up a little bit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I discovered this program. Does anybody know the, this program called Prezi for presentation? What's it called? Prezi, P-R-Z-I. <laughs> You're all going to go in. It's, it, did it make anybody seasick or nauseous? It did? Not today, but I've seen You've seen other ones? I've seen Prezi ones which are just nauseating. Not because they do all this turning thing and yeah. yeah but it hasn't, no, nobody got nauseous. I'm just curious. OK. Um, but what I found would be really, I think it would be really good for my work. I thought it would be because, and I, I actually really enjoyed putting this together, was that um, there are these kinds of tr you know, um, projects that, like for instance, this, is, this whole line here is the Suns project, which is really not about Suns, but about photography. Um, but then out of that comes this other thing that we didn't talk about today, but like I could just you know, I did this other project around copyrighted sons based on a discussion board that came out of this presentation, this, this exhibition, and that led to some other things here, and that led to this project, and then um, the sons projects came out of a consideration of print media and idyllic spaces that, that came from also thinking about views on the internet views through idyllic homes. And so, you know, there's then this armoire project that led to the TV project, but it also led to the Suns project. So then I have like this other vertical here, and this led to used objects mm -hmm. that we used to love and nobody wants anymore, and the relationship to the screen, and then screen technology, and then other technologies that led to the cameras, that led to the mountains. But then up here, there's, so I have like all of these kind of horizontal it's like and the wormhole of a Google yeah, image search right. or something. So yeah. it's like, and it, yeah. it, 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 it sort of traces how I work also. Like I'll be working on this, and then I'll be like, oh, but there's all these these um, used LCD, there's these used these LCD TVs that people are selling that are broken, and they turn them on to show that the parts work. While I'm, you know, while I'm working on, on those, well, wherever they went, yeah, these, I start to find these, and yeah. So, uh, questions out there? David. Um, something that was um, a major strain of conversation at an event we had at the CCP a couple of weeks ago is sort of where the edges of photography are, sort of what constitutes photography. Mm. I'm curious as to how much you've dealt with that and thinking about you know, the, the, 
canonical you know, stream of right. cartography and sort of the way cartography is conceived of within certain circles right. and, and what, your, what your practice is and sort of uh, how, what you see as your relationship to that, but also how others have um, sort of intellectualized your relationship to that. Right. Um, I th it's a really good question for me to answer too, specifically because um, about three years ago, I was in a show at um, in Arles, in in France. I'm not saying it properly. Arles, Arles, we know the, the Rencontre <laughs> de Arles um, show, and it was um, it was called From Here On, and it had all of these a lot of people doing work sort of like mine. I th I think a lot of it was maybe um, you know within the context, everybody's work probably was a lot deeper than, than it seemed when everybody was together. But I think um, what, what that did was it galvanized for me a moment, like everybody was saying that, um, that photography is dead in a certain kind of way. The, the sort of ethos was um, there are no photographers anymore um, because you could just find photographs or whatever. And it was the first time that I actually felt like I could say I was a photographer. Like I was kind of insistent on saying I was. I, I could. Um, because, um, because it became, at, at that point anyway, in my mind, um, such a non-exclusive medium um, that um, it, it can't really exclude anybody. But also realizing that what I do online is actually equivalent to a documentary photographer. I'm documenting things that I find interesting, so when I go to a site you were asking me. I have this whole. I wonder if this will show. If I yeah. So um, I have this collection of images, which I haven't done anything yet. They're just a collection still of um, images of people's fingers touching hardware, like um, computer hardware. And I find it a really interesting phenomenon. This idea of the sort of insertion of the body into the machine in this way. And um, some of these are better than others, but. Sometimes you get like you know a finger into an actual into the body of a laptop or something that I or taking it a, apart, um, and you would ask me like how do I find those you know and it's like I don't I don't just do a search on I couldn't do a search on Flickr or on Google fingers touching hardware nobody would ever tag <laughs> their their images that right um, so. <laughs> So I have to, you know, I have to look for sites that I think I might find that, and that's very much of a documentary photographer position. You're not going to go to, um, you know, you're not going to go to a pet store if you want to do a documentary project on mechanics. You know, you'll go to a mechanic, you know, it's a mechanical engineer studio, or you might go to a car, whatever. So, but that um, also gets to that back to that idea of the the public space online and the the equivalent not not to a street photographer in that instance, but responding to this world sort right. of laid out before you. I do think it's like a street photographer, though. Mm -hmm. I, I think that, like the, that the internet is a kind of street. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, not the same kind of street, but it is kind of like people put things out on the street. There's public interaction, and there are things to be seen. And, yeah. 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 Comment, yeah. Specifically with that uh, show that you had on the sides, did you use copyright material? Did you use? Uh, I used everything. And but did you give them credit if you did? Well, and I mean, look at these are copyrighted, and I used these. Um, but you know, I'm calling attention to the copyright here. In in the um, in the Suns project, there's a bitter, big, bigger image of that. Um, well, for one thing, no, I didn't give credit. I used just a tiny part of the images. Let's see if we can go back to, yeah. I only used images that I felt were scripted, that I could find like just a circle of the sun in. And I, I um, took out in every instance everything but the sun. So the images that I made 
the size of the sun was based on the amount of atmosphere around it without having any subjective, like without having any um, land or land trees or, or yeah, buildings any or context, people. So, yeah. right. mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that I was really dealing with in this project is the idea of this collective um, practice of photographing the sunset. So even if I could have, like I couldn't, I wouldn't have been able to make the project if I had had to ask permission to use people's photographs because I needed, you know, for instance, this one, I needed 2,500 images to fill this wall and I just wouldn't have done it. So, um, I mean, unless I was wealthy and I could hire people to do it or something, but um, I'm, I'm not. So, but the other aspect of it is even if I could, it would have um, been counterintuitive to the project had I given attribution because the whole point is, is about the kind of collective nature of this kind of photography. So that's what I was interested in, in talking about with that work. Yeah, but so. you, know, you, you right now, it's your copyright on that, correct? I mean, you talked about your I don't copyright my work. I mean, you could go and make my work if you want, but you know, it's not that interesting if someone else does it because I did it already. <laughs> No, I mean, I, I think we talked a little bit about this actually earlier. Um, the idea of like, can you take something and use it, you know? And so within the sea of all sorts of stuff where you're not really sure where, you know, if you did a Google image search on a sun, for instance, a sunset, what you come up with is a whole lot of different kinds of images and any one of them could be anything, right? Like they're, um, it's not until you go into the site where it's from and try to do some research where it becomes something other than just this kind of neutral um, image. If you can take that image and work with it and use it and transform it and make it your own, then um, it's become something else. And if you can't, then that means that that image is very strongly authored by the original person. You know, So if you took... Um, I'm it's trying kind to think of an of interesting uh, distinction: strong authorship versus weak authorship. Yeah. Right? Well, and, and then there are some things the that are. Yeah. Feeling. Yeah. And then there are some things that are not authored at, at all. Like, you know, you think of um, that Marilyn Monroe po portrait that we were looking at, or like Prince's Marlboro Man. Like, who knows who the photograph photographer was? Who probably maybe some people do know here. Yeah, I think, <laughs> the yeah, I think that is uh, that actually is known. Uh, yeah, you know, right. By now, right. But but, uh, um, but you know, it was the photograph itself was taken, or actually the um, the the Shepherd Fairy and mm -hmm. Obama poster thing is a really great example because um, you know the press photographer who took the photograph of Obama was not supposed to be making an authored kind of photograph. It's a press photograph that Obama actually, you know, everybody, that, that the press car is set up in such a way to take the photograph that Obama wants to be, have taken, not what the photographer who's taking the photograph wants to author. And, um, you know, he's fairly anonymous in that situation. So, um, I mean, if anybody owns that photograph, it's the American people who, who, <laughs> who voted for Obama, not, not the, not AP or the photographer, you know. Interesting. But, any other um, questions? I was just going to say to the, uh, to, to respond again to the idea of um, the distinctions, the edges of photography. I'm, I'm curious about like whether there really ever was any kind of edge of, you know, like whether there's, there's no, like I think right now photography seems really unstable because there's so many different kinds of photographers, there's so many kinds of cameras, there's so many techniques, there's so many kinds of photographs, um, but hasn't there always been? I mean, it's just, it's never really been a very well-defined medium, which is actually what's so great about it. I mean, it's so exciting about it. It's always been able to be used, you know, in a way that no other medium has been able to be used. All right. Well, maybe that's a good place to end. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.